What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Today we're gonna to be talking about heart failure nursing management. Let's get started. So when it comes to heart failure nursing management, what are nursing goals? So when it comes to caring for our heart failure patients, we're going to be looking at oxygenation, perfusion, fluid and electrolytes, as well as comfort. So let's talk about oxygenation when it comes to our heart failure patients. So with heart failure, the fluid that is building up in the lungs is going to prevent the oxygen from diffusing down into the bloodstream for the hemoglobin. So when it comes to nursing management, we wanna make sure that we're auscultating or listening to lung sounds, and we wanna make sure that we're monitoring for those crackles as well as the ronchi that, it can, that can occur due to pulmonary congestion. We wanna make sure that we're monitoring our SpO2, which lets us know what's going on with our oxygenation, and our end tidal CO2, or, or end tidal caponography, depending on what they use. Um, it's the same thing anyways, but it, end tidal CO2, which is letting us know um, how the gas change is occurring with our carbon dioxide. Next, we can provide oxygenation as needed. Typically, we want them 92% or greater, so if they're 88, we wanna make sure we're throwing oxygen on them, but if they're at 94, usually they're typically okay. And then we also want to make sure that we have our head of bed elevated 45 degrees or greater. Um, that's also known as our semi or high fowler's position to help with oxygenation. Because patients are going to be on a lot of different medications, there is an increased risk for falls. So we really want to emphasize the importance of changing positions slowly because if they were to change too quickly, we could have syncopal episodes um, or even hypotensive episodes depending on what happens in that systemic circulation. Next, let's talk about perfusion. So when it comes to perfusion, we want to make sure we're assessing peripheral perfusion. So we're looking at skin color, we're checking our pulses, checking, checking temperature, as well as capillary refill. And it's also important to note that we compare findings bilaterally. So if the right arm is very edematous and the left arm is not, we want to make sure that we're comparing bilateral um, sides of the body so that we can differentiate what's happening. It's worse on the right than it is on the left, so on and so forth. We want to monitor vital signs. Vital signs are extremely important when it comes to our heart failure patients. And we also want to make sure we're administering those blood pressure medications so that way that vasoconstriction that could be happening due to the RAS system that we talked about in our previous video, if you haven't checked it out, make sure you go back and read about the care and pathophysiology. But when it comes to that constriction um, due to the RAS system, we want to make sure that we're able to perfuse forward. Remember, perfusion forward is impeded and then we start to see congestion backwards. If we're taking away that constriction and causing vasodilation, we're able to get the nutrients and oxygenation where they need to go. We do that by administering our blood pressure medications. And then lastly, monitoring our blood pressure as well as our BNP. Neither one of these should increase, right? They should not increase. So making sure that we're monitoring them and assessing our trends of what's happening with blood pressure and BNP. Now let's talk about our fluid and our electrolytes. So patients are going to be in fluid overload due to, the con due to the congestion of the heart. So we're either going to see our lungs fluid overloaded or systemic circulation fluid overloaded or both depending on how severe the heart failure is. Something that's also important to know is the kidneys are going to try to compensate for that decrease in perfusion due to trying to retain more water, right? So with nursing management, when it comes to fluid and electrolytes, we wanna make sure that, with, that they are on strict intake and output. We need to make sure what's going in is also coming out so it doesn't make the congestion worse. Um, we wanna be monitoring for sodium. They should have no more than two grams a day as well as fluid restrictions, no more than two liters per day. Um, really, you need to question any orders for fluids, especially with worsening heart failure when it comes to these patients. We also wanna make sure that we're not giving them any fried food, canned or packaged foods, and no over-the-counter medications such as Tylenol, cold and flu medications, anti-acid and NSAIDs because they all contain lots of salt. So it's really important for patients to understand that these medications also contain sodium. So if they are on a two gram per day restriction, that they are not inevitably taking medications that they that they're just taking out of comfort that can inevitably make their heart failure worse. So no over-the-counter medications, look for other alternatives with your provider. Next, 
we want to perform those daily weights because as we know, one kilogram of body weight um, is usually equal to one liter of water retention. So if we have um, our body weight continuously going up, then we're having this buildup of water retention. So we really need to be monitoring that daily to make sure that that's not getting worse. And then lastly, medication administration. Diuretics are a great tool when it comes to relieving fluid overload. If you have a, a patient that has a low potassium, however, you want to be very careful in the amount of potassium wasting diuretics that you're giving. You may need to have a conversation with your provider about giving some potassium sparing medications such as spirolactone so that you don't make that hypokalemia worse. And our last goal is comfort care, right? We want to make sure that our patient is comfortable because as we know, heart failure is going to be extremely uncomfortable for the patient. They're going to have swelling in their legs and their abdomen. Fluid is going to be building up in the lungs. They're going to start to be short of breath. They're going to be easily fatigued. So when it comes to comfort care, a couple of the things that we can do when it comes to nursing management is we can elevate the patient's legs to kind of help with that drainage and fluid process elevating the head of bed, like we talked about before, with patient positioning, slow position changes, because as we know, if a patient moves too quickly with all that fluid overload, as well as those medications that they're taking to manage um, their, to manage the pathophysiology of heart failure, they can have syncopal episodes, so we don't want that. And then lastly, Providing pain medication is needed. Like we said, heart failure is going to be very uncomfortable. And sometimes pain medication can inevitably help with vasodilation, depending on what the pain medication is, as well as providing comfort with that um, discomfort with our patients. So let's talk about patient discharge. What are we going to send the patient home with when they are discharged from the hospital with heart failure? So the number one thing we wanna talk about is lifestyle and dietary changes. We really need to make sure that when they go home, they are still limiting that sodium as well as those fluid restrictions. Frequent, frequent monitoring, daily weights to make sure that the congestion is not getting worse in the body. Blood pressure monitoring to address any hypertension that's occurring due to the RAS system, as well as symptom monitoring and how to treat those. Um, medication compliance is huge, right? A lot of times patients start taking medications when they go home or they don't take medications at all when they go home. So it's really important that if they are on any kind of new medication upon discharge, that they receive the appropriate education regarding those meds. Um, changes in daily medication routines. So some medications may be discharged. We might have to inform the patient, hey, you were taking this, but now you're gonna take this, so make sure you're not taking this medication anymore, making sure they really comprehend and understand that. And then lastly, you know, following precautions when it comes to uh, patients receiving vasodilators, because as we know, they need to change positions very slowly if they're on any kind of vasodilator, because they are at an increased risk for fall or syncope, depending on how severe um, their symptoms are when it comes to those medications. And then lastly, educating them on when to contact their PCP. So if the patient starts to experience chest pain, shortness of breath, or they start to have weight gain three pounds in one day or five pounds over seven days, that's very bad. We're having an increase in that congestion and the and fluid retention, right? So they need to be following up their PCP when they start to notice those symptoms so they can look at um, management of heart failure and make the appropriate changes depending on um, what they find is necessary. I hope that this video is helpful in understanding nursing management when it comes to heart failure. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure you follow me on my social media, on my Facebook, as well as Instagram. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube and turn on that bell notification so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Head over to nursechung.com for those additional resources when it comes to heart failure nursing management. But until next time, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.